Born in France, an American citizen, you, Richard Ned Lebeau, are one of the leading theorists of international relations in the global academic community. Synthesizing the best of American and European political science traditions and bridging the two sides of the Atlantic, your scholarship has provoked debate about strategies of deterrence, the imperative of building a nonviolent world, and the responsibilities and challenges of American foreign policy. We at the American University of Paris offer you an honor honorary degree for the ethical stand you have taken as a global citizen, urging international responsibility for a world of interdependence, a stand in full alignment with our university's mission. One of your most influential works is We All Lost the Cold War, in which you explore the roots of international conflict with the aim of developing more effective strategies of conflict prevention and resolution. Your most recent book, The Politics and Ethics of Identity, has inspired us. Concerned as it is with an identity politics that demonizes the other in order to define and protect the self. In this book, you make the case for more porous, permeable, receptive identities in a contemporary political environment characterized by a resurgence of hardened political identities. Your work refuses the false dichotomy between the ethical frames provided by the humanities and the pragmatism of policy and political choice, and holds out the hope that students such as ours, wearing comfortably their multiple citizenships, can have a powerful impact on the world. Thank you. say a few words to the class of 2012. Well, greetings to everyone. And I'm greatly honored to receive this degree. And I want to thank uh, Chairman of the Trustees Ogilvy, President Schenck, and of course, the faculty. My first encounter with an honorary degree was at Yale in 1962 when President Kennedy received an honorary degree. And never at a loss for amusing words, he told the multitude of assembled Yale families that he now had the best of two possible worlds, a Harvard education and a Yale degree. <laughs> I now have an American education and a Paris degree, but unlike the president, <coughs> I do not make light of it. Uh, I value them both very deeply because they represent important things to me. My American education gave me the modern tools of social science with which I could pursue my research agenda. European and French literature and philosophy have given me insight into the deep questions about <coughs> society and about conflict. And they have shaped my research agenda. I view this degree as a sign that to some extent I have uh, achieved my goals. So I'm, um, again, very grateful to all of you for this. In the few words that I have allotted uh, today, I want to uh, talk very briefly about the implications of my earlier research, which was on questions of conflict uh, management, foreign policy, deterrence, and above all, the uh, foreign policy catastrophes, uh, so many of which we have observed in the course of the 20th century. I found that the uh, most common and also the <coughs> most terrible pathology of all is what we psychologists call closure. Uh, this means that we display uh, a preference for our own beliefs, our own opinions, our own information or information that we generated in preference to the beliefs, expectations, opinions, and information from the outside. To some extent, all of us, including you, as graduates, need to march to your own drum 
and need to sometimes uh, walk in the face of the external environment. But to succeed, you have to be sensitive to it, to the needs, to the opinions, to the goals of others. If I look at recent examples of closure, I could offer you one from the corporate world, General Motors, which nearly collapsed had it not been bailed out by the American government because it ignored the market, convinced that it could just go on behaving the way it did uh, and not become what it did, almost a dinosaur. The American invasion or Anglo-American invasion of Iraq offers another example. The Bush administration paid attention only to its own goals, its own interests, its own intelligence, even when it was challenged from the outside, and made no plans for the occupation of Iraq uh, beyond taking over the building that managed the oil industry. Uh, this is a classical example of closure and with consequences uh, that need no further elaboration. Now, it's my view that periodically the United States goes through periods when Americans feel threatened, feel confused by outside events, and like ostriches, uh, hope to stick their heads in the sand and engage in a kind of psychological and informational closure to the outside world. With this often comes hostility to others. We can think about the period of know-nothings in the late 19th century, the fear of communists and anti-immigrant sentiment after World War I, the McCarthy period in the 1950s, and I think, again today, since the end of the Cold War, we're witnessing another version of the same phenomenon. Americans are confused by what's happened since the end of the Cold War. They desperately want to hold on to a hegemony which, in fact, they never had. They are confused and even angered by criticisms of others, of their policies and most of all, by the unwillingness of others to accept their God-given right to lead. This results at times not only in hostility, but in stereotypes of others, and we see this particularly directed against uh, China, but also against Europe. Uh, the Bush administration spokesman referred to Europe as the old tired Europe, at least the Western European part of it. More recently, uh, Rick Santoro, a candidate for the presidency, referred to secular Europeans as people who have nothing to live for. Now, all of you who have one foot in France and one foot in another country, whether it be America or somewhere else, value and understand the need for openness. And France and America are both magnificent civilizations because they not only have generated uh, their own approach to life, but they've always been open to other people, to other ideas, to new practices. It's your job, in addition to anything else you do, to carry this message wherever you go, to explain Europe to Americans, or America to Europe, and struggle to keep minds everywhere open and prevent them from closing. In my closing, I would like to wish you all a very happy graduation and a very long and successful life. Mes félicitations à tous. Je souhaite que vous avez une longue et joyeuse vie à tous. Merci.